When you get through this question, you're listing factors, right? We're looking for numbers that I can divide by and have no remainders out, right? That's what a factor is. Like, what kind of groups can I split 24 into, okay? Now, you can always start by saying one, because every number can divide by about one. And then you start going through the numbers and, and dividing through mentally in your head, and can I divide through without a remainder? Now, one of the questions people are asking me is, how do I know I've got all the factors? Like, do I have to check every single number? And there's a way, and I want to show you, it's really cool, how you can know you've got all the factors, okay? Watch very closely. I start with one, right? Uh, it's an even number, so that means I can divide by two, right? That's an even number there, so I just go two. And you start to go through, um, I can divide by three, and I can divide by four, and then I'm going to pause, right? When I get to the next number, 5, that doesn't divide, but 6 does. Now pause. I'm going to write 6 here instead of continuing on. And the reason why I write 6 there is because what is 24 divided by 6? What is 24 divided by 6? It's, um, it's 4, isn't it? It's 4, and 4 is a number that's already on my list. Do you see that? I already knew that. So what happens is that 4 and 6 are, in fact, matched up together. They're a pair. Right? Like that. Every factor has a pair in a number, okay? As I keep going, I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to pair up the other numbers. 7 doesn't divide through, but 8 does, right? What's 8 divided into? It's going to be 3. So you see I've got another pair there. Now, having done that, there's quite a few numbers I've got to go through to get to the next number. But I can work it out rather than doing every single one individually, I just look for the next pair. What's 24 divided by 2? 12. It's 12. That's the next pair right there. And now you can see I've only got, without having tested every single one, remember, mathematicians, lazy, trying to minimize the work that we do, I know there's only one more number that's going to be on my list. What is it? 24. 24. Because it matches with 1. Okay? I don't need to test out 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, etc. I already know I've got my complete list there because everything matches up. Okay? So when you're going through the factors, rather than just list them out, if you haven't gotten all the way through, I would encourage you to try and pair them up. Okay? Now, just one more thing. I want to show you the next number, 25. Okay? And this is an interesting one because we can start with 1. Not even, doesn't divide three or four. The next one is five, okay? But five's a bit interesting. What happens when you divide 25 by five? What do you get back, Nikhil? Five. You get back that number. So I found five is kind of its own pair, right? There's nothing else paired up with it. So in fact, after that, the only number left is 25, right? So these guys pair up, and this guy kind of just hangs out with himself. He's is a fun guy, okay? So you can see some of the numbers are a bit sneaky like that, and they are special numbers. When you go through and you do the sieve of Eratosthenes, that's how you pronounce it, by the way, sieve of, I, pr I, I write it like this, Eratosthenes, don't ask me what Tosthenes means, but that's how you pronounce his name, crazy Greeks, okay? When you look at, when you look at question five, and you grab this, um, this sheet from me, and you go through the sieve of Eratosthenes, um, you will see, you get all the primes that encompasses there, and you'll notice these ones are special. Okay, so I'll let you discover that in the due time.